right, guys, we're back with another Couch Potato General Manager video reacting to another mock draft. And this mock draft comes from Damian Parsons from the Draft Network. We've actually followed Damian's work for a long time. Damian's work for uh, Stripe Hype. He covered the Arizona Cardinals. He's worked at Cover One. Very knowledgeable, very passionate about the NFL draft. And, and of course, now he's a member of the Draft Network. And I really encourage you guys to... Follow him on Twitter. He's an excellent to follow. He's actually been on our ch channel before. Last year, we had I had a conversation with him regarding the draft. You know what his thoughts were about several different prospects. And Damien's been at it for quite some time, and he, and he's well respected uh, with respect to his NFL draft knowledge and his talent evaluation aptitude. So, Drew, let's jump into his uh, inaugural mock draft with the Draft Network. And first overall, he has Evan Neal, offensive tackle from Alabama, going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. No surprise there. Really, it's a question of whether or not you want to address the offensive or defensive line. This is a meat and potatoes pick at the top of the draft. And in this case, Damien is opting to protect Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'm, I'm going to do it one more time. Right? I guess we're going to do it every time we do a mock and, yeah. and an offensive lineman. One of these tackles goes there. Uh, you just got to protect the franchise, like you said. And it's one of two for me. It's Evan Neal or it's Icky. Icky is the nickname. Yes. Ikum. I Iguanu, yes. did I say it right? I got it. Oh, yes. I got it. There you go. Down the there you go. Hit a like. Hit a like for that, guys. Hit a like for that. I struggle. I struggle <laughs> with words. Show Drew some love by hitting that you know like I mean? button. Hit the like button. <laughs> it, it's it's one of the two, and, and whoever it is, listen, just just protect the quarterback because e either one of these guys are going to do that. With the second overall pick, Damian has the Detroit Lions selecting Kayvon Thibodeau, edge from Oregon. Now, of course, there's a lot of scuttlebutt. I'm going to use the term scuttlebutt regarding Thibodeau and comparisons to Jadevian Clowney and concerns that, you know, he, he just he just too nice with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. there isn't that that dog in him, per se. I think that's being questioned in terms of in terms of his his actual passion and things of that nature. And, and quite a few mocks, you're seeing him trickle down to the, the latter parts of the top 10. And this actually goes back. It harkens to a, a conversation that I had with Damien last year. And he mentioned, you know, going way back, going way back in his evaluation. When I say way back, just several years back. He he told me that he made the mistake of of opting for Derek Barnett over Miles Garrett in terms of his rankings at that time. And, and he was looking at the production and he was taking into consideration the concerns about you know, did Garrett have the, the dogged mentality? Did he have the drive? Did he have the passion? You know, there were questions. There were questions about Miles Garrett not showing up against certain competition, lesser competition, almost as if he was disinterested, right? And and there were certain detractors for that. And he, he learned from that is, is what he ultimately told me, he explained to me is that, you know, when you have these types of traits and, and ability, you know, you, you bet on that. You bet on that. You bet on professional coaching, being able to harness that. This early my scouting, uh, when I was really getting into it, it was the year Miles Garrett and Derek Barnett came out. And I remember some of my guys were like, man, Miles Garrett, is, it's Miles Garrett. I was like, man, you know, he's such a freak athlete. He's so strong against, I think it was against smaller competition it was either, I can't remember what I wrote down, but it was either smaller competition disappeared or against better competition disappeared. But he was disappearing halfway through the season at times. And then I look at Derek Barnett. He was technical. He had handwork, you know, all that good placement, set the edge well, all those things. Well, I had Derek Barnett over him simply because of the technical aspect. And I and I learned from that situation that if they're even in, in, certain, in certain aspects, lean towards the athleticism. I certainly understand him taking Thibodeau here. I believe Thibodeau has the highest ceiling in terms of all the edge rushers and a very deep class of edge rushers. I still remain in the camp of Thibodeau being the top edge rusher. What about you, Drew? I know that Thibodeau is dropping down people's big boards and and um, and in people's mocks. Uh, but and you said it, and I was thinking about it, and I, I was thinking, you know, is, is is Thibodeau? Is it one of those things? Because because we've heard, you know, and scuttlebutt. Is he? I don't want to say loafing, but um, just not bringing the same heat every play. And I don't know if I, I, I haven't seen that. So I'm not going to say that's the case uh, for me and what I've seen. Um, I think it's like you said, I think it's, it's sometimes players are so good at what they do. Sometimes it looks like, damn, like he's really trying, like, because he's, it's just, he's so nice. He's so smooth with it. And, um, you know, at, at the end of the day for the Lions, 
you know, it's going to be, I, I for me, it's going to be one of the two, Thibodeau or Hutchinson. I, I don't think that changes. And like you said, uh, DP went ahead and went with the, the more explosive and the higher ceiling player in Thibodeau. Yeah, I think if anything, you you can accuse Thibodeau of perhaps looking ahead a little bit. See, he understands that, you know, he's he's highly coveted. He's been that way since his high school days, since the latter part of his high school career. You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And and I think I think that, that it started to kind of, it, you know, he talked about it. He talked about his decision to opt for Oregon and, and, and work with that Nike brand versus versus Alabama. And and of course, that that might turn some some front offices, some people off. You know what I mean? You know, why why is he concerned about that? He needs to be concerned about playing the game. You know what I'm saying? Making 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 his his mark playing the game and all of the rest will kind of fall into place. You know what I mean? So I I certainly understand how that might throw cold water on it for some individuals. Speaking of Aiden Hutchinson, uh Damian has him being selected by the Texans with the third overall pick. Now, um they're they're obviously <laughs> people who believe that the Texans should be addressing the offensive line. I, I happen to be one of those individuals. What do you think about this selection here? Uh, <laughs> so for me, uh, and I've said it before, I'm going to continue to say it. it it's going to be the, the Texans are kind of like the Jaguars. It's going to be one of the two. It's going to be one of the, the top edge rushers or it's going to be an offensive lineman. I'm with you, Sarah McCoy. We are with you. They yes, need to be selecting an offensive tackle. But DP has them selecting Aiden Hutchinson. I don't hate it. Like, it's one of the two. I sure, prefer sure. and think you got to protect your quarterback, whoever the hell that is, um, for the Texans. Uh, but you got, you got, he come on the board, man. Yeah. I don't know if you can pass that up right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, ugh, that one yeah, hurts a little bit. It hurts I'm, a little I'm, bit. I'm, I tend to be in that camp as well. You know, n- nothing nothing against Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, right. I think he's going to be terrific. Um, we talked about it previously. This Texans team was abysmal on the ground. Right. Aside from the one blow up by Burkhead at the end of the season, man, this, the Texans basically finished last in all rushing categories: yardage, yards per carry, touchdowns, so on and so forth. Ike McQuano obviously will help a Davis Mills or whomever the quarterback is there, um, short term, long term, whatever the case may be. But it's what he does in terms of displacing defenders in the running game that really gets you excited. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I. I I certainly understand, and 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 I don't hate the pick of Hutchinson, but I'd be hard pressed to pass up a Quanu at this juncture, particularly for this Texans team. I like what they got from Grenard. You know what I'm saying? I right. I, I like. I, I think you Florida. know moving to a four three. You know, yeah. and I certainly understand it from that perspective. Hutchinson would would would, would fall into place great there, but you know we've talked about it at nauseum on this channel, and I'm going to reiterate it. You know, in in this league, in order to to be able to actually play. And make it to the tournament on a consistent basis, you got to be able to score points, right? Which means you have to be able to protect the pass because the points come out of the passing game, you know? And, and certainly it doesn't help to salt games away on the ground with the physical specimen and, and, and that nasty that Aquanu brings to the table. Of course, there's question marks about Laramie Tunsil as well. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm of the mindset that, yes, defense still wins championships, but in order to get into the tournament, you're going to have to outscore some opponents. And Aquanu helps you do that in terms of being able to be a role grader and and protect the quarterback as well. All right. Speaking of Iquanu, the EP has it coming off the board, <laughs> fourth to the Jets, and I love it. I love it, man. I, I I don't I don't know exactly how you how you finagle things in terms of Becton. I think you know Morgan Moses obviously acquitted himself well, but right. you know Moses is an unrestricted free agent. I I'm all for book ending. These two guys, if you have Makai Becton, who again was was kind of the Aquano of of his class, right? Just a, a a physical mauler, you know what I'm saying? This places guys just 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 immediately bolsters your running game with a lot of room. Um, I, I shouldn't say a lot of room. I, I I think I think a pretty a pretty s- substantial floor in terms of pass protection, but room to grow in that department. I, I'd be very excited, assuming the Jets have an opportunity to draft Aquano. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything else to be said, man. I mean, you know, you, you have your rookie quarterback and Zach Wilson back there. You obviously, like you said, you want to you want to protect him. You you bookend those guys, and we're gonna run the football, play action. Um, and it, I mean, could they have gone, you know, a receiver, maybe, but not with the talent of, of a uh, of an Ecom on the board there. I think it's it, it makes too much sense there. I, I think with with two first round picks here, two top ten picks, 
you know th this is this is the right move at this juncture you know it, it, it's a it's a good class of, right. of offensive tackles it is a very deep class of wide receivers and you're still going to have an opportunity to, to potentially pick the top one or two guys on your board at that position if you decide to ultimately select the receiver with the 10th overall pick so i don't know this this is where it starts it starts up front it's, it absolutely starts up front and then you can add pieces to the elijah moore to the to the uh uh what's my guy's name oh barrios Braxton. yeah 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 did you that's the you right there and i, I just disrespected him <laughs> you know you say so you, you obviously obviously you used the draft pick last year on elijah moore we think you know he 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 flashed while healthy if he can stay healthy right. i think he'll take off braxton barrios i think made a very a difference down the stretch they like him in the slot you know oh, of course of course you know things haven't worked out with denzel mims and, and Corey davis was a bit of a disappointment in season but you know like i said they can address that receiver position later in this draft all right moving right along with the fifth overall pick the giant i'm just playing <laughs> <laughs> Damien has the Giants drafting Jermaine Johnson. All right. And he makes he makes a point here. He makes a point here that Lorenzo Carter has 14 and a half sacks in four years with the Giants. It's been a problem. It's been a problem, right? <laughs> um, we love Aziz Ojalari. We think he's gonna continue to develop. He had eight as a rookie. And now you pair him with Jermaine Johnson here, and uh. you have the makings of a very, very formidable pass rush here on the edge. That's what it does. Senior ball. This, this this is what the senior ball does, man. J Jermaine Johnson, wh where was he going, bro? Where where was where do you think he was going before senior ball? Before senior ball, in in all likelihood, um, round two, round two, typically, and, and and late round one at the most, at the most, late round one. We're talking we're talking twenty four between twenty four and thirty two. Yeah. And now that man locked in, locked in for like a. A top fifteen pick. Yeah, yeah. I think and, I think it's a foregone conclusion at this juncture. Yeah. And when you when you no longer have to practice at the mm -hmm. Senior Bowl, not playing the game because we know Castle is not playing the game. We know you know they're gonna right. be top pick. Not practice anymore. He went to what two practices? Yeah. And then he was. I'm done. I did. I did. I, I did what I needed to do. Secure the bag. Yep. I yep. had one issue with them, just one, and it was you know I need to see more after that first move, and he showed me that. Uh, at the senior bowl so in those practices so he knew what he had to do he did it and here he is going number five to to the giants number five to the giants man that that's that to this point this is the highest i've seen jermaine johnson go but but yeah. i i think i think there's a legitimate shot that he's a top 10 pick now and to yeah. your point i i don't think he gets past the eagles with their first of three first round selections right Moving right along in Damian Parsons' inaugural mock draft for the Draft Network, National Scout for the Draft Network, he has the Panthers selecting Malik Willis of Liberty. And, of course, this is obviously a clear indictment of Sam Darnold. Um, I have not heard any, any support of Sam Darnold this offseason. Again, I do not know what they were thinking last year in terms of giving up the capital that they did. It wasn't an overwhelming amount, but, but I, I just think it was just... It was a it was a bad investment to begin with, and I think I think that that the brass has realized that we're, we don't have a tomorrow if we don't necessarily figure this part of it out. Now, of course, they have a glaring need along their offensive line, but but perhaps perhaps the thinking here is Malik Willis can can help you know mitigate that to some degree. My my question mark here, though, Drew, and, and I'm interested to hear what your take is on it, is that. I came away from the senior bowl thinking Malik Willis obviously has all of the tools. The traits are there. That that is what you want. You want a guy that can really, really take your offense to to another level. You don't necessarily have to find a guy who can fit your system, but but rather he 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 kind of creates the system. You know what I'm saying? Considering right. his abilities, but I'm not sure he's ready to go. To, to be honest with you, and and this particular coaching staff, they, they need they need the panacea immediately. Now the question becomes. Can he be better than Sam Darnold, you know, in year one? That, that's really the question. And, and I don't think that's a high bar, to be honest with you. No, it, it's it's not a high bar. My, my concern for this team would be to fix the offensive line before you, you fix the quarterback. And, and, but Malik Willis might be able to, I, I think he'd be able to circumvent some of those issues that they have up front. Because um, we know Sam Darnold, that, that like, Sam Darnold is one of those players, <laughs> you, you don't want to see him running around trying to do, play hero ball because things sure. get much worse. I think Malik Willis ha has an opportunity to do that, obviously. But, I mean, you, you got Sam Darnold. You know, you can play him for a couple of games, see how it go. 
You know what I mean? And and, and, and let Malik Willis see what it looks like before you throw him in, in the lion's den. Because at some point during the season, he would play if, if this is where he's going. Do I think he's ready right away? No, I agree with you. I don't I don't think he would be ready to go. Uh, that guy comes a little bit later in, in DP's draft, who I think would be ready to go. Sure. Um, and I think that would depend on the offense, too. And, and, and I know uh, Ben McAdoo, you know, it is the offensive coordinator for them. You know, what, what are we doing in terms of offense? What are we trying to do? Are we a West Coast offense? Are we a, an offense that likes to go down the field? You know, I, I think Malik, Malik Willis would do, you would see most of his talent, obviously, in a vertical offense. But I don't know if that's something that you want to put him in immediately. And that's what we do. We're going to do what we do. Because you probably, you're going to see a lot of mistakes versus uh, going with an offense that's kind of in uh, the, the short to intermediate game. I think there's a little bit more oppor uh, less opportunity to make mistakes in those offenses. But I mean, I don't like the fit here. That's all. I'm, I'm gonna leave it down. I, I don't know that I like the fit for the for the Panthers. Yeah, like I said, we start having conversations about traits and and what Malik Willis could be, assuming you have the requisite supporting cast. There's talent. There's talent, obviously, at the skill positions here. But but there's that mm -hmm. glaring need along the offensive line. So so it, it to me kind of depends. It kind of depends on what you do via free agency. You know what I'm saying? How aggressive you are. You know, in 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 day two you know or perhaps trying to move your way back into the first round to to garner another starter if necessary depending like i said depending on how free agency works out the trade market how that works out you know i i think i think there are a number of different scenarios that could lead us to a quarterback being selected here with the sixth overall pick right the problem here is and, and like i said before as talented as willis is i just i don't know that he's ready to go just yet I think he needs a little seasoning first, and and that can come in the form of of simply getting acclimated to how to prepare. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yes, yes, absolutely. At some point, he's going to play this season if Sam Darnold's a quarterback. I I, I don't mm -hmm. I don't think for one second that's not going to be the case. But ultimately, you know, you go to camp and and he demonstrates that he's the best quarterback. You can't afford to sit him. You know what I'm saying? And and the question then becomes, what kind of offensive line is he playing behind? Even right. with all of his athleticism, his ability to extend plays and 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 you know extend drives by using his legs, it, it, it really you really you're hoping that you catch Josh Allen here. That, that's kind of what you're trying to do, okay? But how effective are you in year one? Does that buy you more time? If you're Matt Rule, does 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 Malik Willis buy you some more time? I, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm not sure. So it, it'll be interesting to see how things play out in Carolina throughout this. This offseason for agency, in particular, in the new in the new league year, and then ultimately what takes place as far as uh, the draft is concerned with the sixth overall pick. And I just wonder, I just wonder, did did Joe Burrow start something here? Mm. You know what I mean? You know, because quarterbacks change the outlooks of franchises, but we've also seen quarterbacks fail miserably because what was around them wasn't good enough, or or they weren't able to keep that quarterback said quarterback upright. So. So I just wonder, considering how how much the Bengals' offensive line struggled in pass protection, the fact that they still managed to take the Rams to the brink in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, our team's going to fall into that trap. Oh, nah, that's a special it. quarterback. Don't we do we don't necessarily have what we need in front of him, but but he's so uniquely talented and gifted. I, I just don't think Malik Willis has that kind of pocket presence. Of course, he's a better athlete than Joe right. Burrow. He's, he's you know fleeter of foot, but... But you know, bigger arm. You know what I'm saying? Like he he has all of that in space. But 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 Burrow's pocket presence in particular is special, man. And and, the, and he might be the best in the league at this at, 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 at the blitz. He was yes. the best in the league. Yeah. I, I don't know yes. that Willis is gonna be able to. You know what I'm saying? Burn people. Yes. You know? Do, do they have a chase that he's throwing the ball to? You know what sure. I'm saying? Like, sure. do we have these things that? Sure. The Panthers they have a a a, a solid. Um, a solid squad in terms of their offense, mm -hmm. but it ain't Cincinnati Bengal uh, offense. You know what yeah, I mean? Not, in, not in terms quite. of talent. You know not, what I'm saying? Not, so quite. not quite. I hope that's not what they're thinking. You know, we can fire Matt Rule right now, bro. That's the thought process. You know, it's, it's an interesting conversation, though. I do think you got to give the edge to the Bengals to some degree, right? Considering okay. ultimately what they've done. And then, like I said, Burrow is just different in terms of navigating that pocket, man. You know what I'm saying, and 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 making making the opposition pay when you when you don't help those corners out, making them pay. You know what I'm saying. So I just wanted to to, to put a bow on that because I, I I do think I do think considering 
how much success they had this season um in year two for burrow mind you um right. i think there might be some teams who 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 say hey we're gonna bet on on the quarterback being the the difference maker and getting us to the promised land you know and then and then if we we continue to struggle in certain areas then we'll we'll try to address that later next up we have the giants with the second of their two first round picks five and seven previously they drafted jermaine johnson and now this time around they are drafting an offensive lineman trevor penny off the tackle from northern iowa now drew you were actually the first person i ever saw select penning seventh overall you guys check out our our dual mock draft where we go head to head and we're selecting for each team i think that time around i was selecting for the afc and you were selecting for the nfc now did you select him for the panthers or the giants in that one yeah. all right you guys you guys let us know you guys let us know go on, go back check out that mock draft it was a lot of fun check out that one like i said drew was the first one to have penning i saw to this point with top 10 and i believe it was either to the panthers or the giants so guys let us know what you think about that but in this case, in this case, what do you what do you think about Penning landing in New York with the seventh overall pick? Real quick, that's three players from the senior ball in a row. Just want to put Ooh. that out there. <laughs> Just want to put it out there. You gotta go, man. Some, some gotta guys go. missed some opportunities. Some guys missed some opportunities. The guy at the very bottom of this draft that missed an opportunity, I think. But you know, what we could talk about that later. Yeah, I mean, we we gotta fix the offensive line. This is a guy who who you can slip right in. Uh, the question is, is does he play left or right? Because uh, you do have Andrew Andrew Thomas. You know that that I guess that would be the the discussion there. Trevor Peng is a guy who, <laughs> listen, you're probably gonna start some fights, man. You got that Ryan Jensen, Quentin Nelson type. He, I think he's more Ryan Jensen just because people <laughs> want to fight you. Like <laughs> Quentin Nelson just be bullying you, and they'd be like, "All right, man, let me get you up. You good? Everybody good? Dap up and go." Penning's like, "No, nah, I'm trying to bury you into the ground. I'm probably gonna try to put a foot on you, Sue style. Just kidding. Um, and, and then we're gonna do it again next play." Like all over again, uh, all over I, I, again. I think I, I, I like um, protecting the quarterback again. You know, uh, Daniel Jones is there. I don't know, you know, what the plan is there. According to the owner, we didn't do what we needed to do to give him everything that he needs um, in terms of coaching. Big, most of it was obviously coaching, and I think the offensive line. And if their running back can ever stay healthy, you know, I, I assume they want to see what they can get out of him. You got a nice start with with Trevor Penning I and mean, Thomas tidying up those end spots. Yeah, Penning played a bit of guard at the Senior Bowl as well. He, he played tackle yeah. and guard, and, and they're just trying yeah. to determine, you know, ultimately where the best fit would be. And give 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 the scouts an opportunity to get a look at him at both positions. Drew, you mentioned it, the, the nastiness, you know, it, it, it seeps out of his pores. You like that. You like a guy that's going to finish. I think he, he immediately bolsters your running game. There's some work to do in pass pro, but, but he's competent. He's competent, and I think he has the ability, the aptitude, and the work ethic in order to get that done. You know, I, I've been mentioned of it before and I'll, I'll reiterate it here. You know, he's working with Duke Mannyweather, you know, and I, I had an opportunity to talk to him about that. If you guys check out our senior bowl recap post of the offense, you can see the interview there in terms of, in terms of the mentality and what they're accomplishing with respect to that. Matter of fact, I didn't ask him that question. Someone else asked him, actually asked him that question, but he mentioned, you know, that, that that's been a great opportunity and, and the competition that's taking place there with the guys like Evan Neal and, and Charles Cross and, and, um, you know, a, a host of other guys, including Darian Kennard, that that really helping one another. And then, of course, he goes to the senior bowl and and, and it wasn't all pretty. It wasn't all pretty. But I think a lot of people came away impressed and optimistic about what his ceiling ultimately can be. Ladder first round, you know, at the turn of the new year, worked his way into the top 20. And, and now after the senior bowl, you know, you're going to see instances. And Drew, you, you were actually ahead of the curve here. You're going to see instances where with him being in the top 10 and. And I think he's a, a, a top half of the first round pick for sure. All right. Next up, we have the Atlanta Falcons with the eighth overall pick and superstar, all world, you know, Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? Considering those are the type of guys that he's being compared to. Kyle Hamilton, safety from Notre Dame. The Falcons need talent. You know, where, where, where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? He is not your typical safety. Obviously, you know, and, and I, I can imagine a situation, depending on ultimately what they do with Richie Grant, they, they might actually play Richie Grant on the boundary. You know what I'm saying? He has some ability at corner, but, you know, that, that, that could be a very formidable duel at the safety position. Considering everything that the Falcons have to do, what do you think about a pick in the form of a safety here? Yeah, I just, I don't look for the Falcons in terms of talent. Thumbs up. Let's get it. It's just, it's it's the furthest position from the football, right? Um, but but again, traditionally, 
tr tr traditionally. Traditionally, I correct. But yes. what are you doing with Kyle Hamilton? That's right. my question. That, that would be the ultimate. Anybody that drafts him, what is the plan with him? If it's for him to just be the lone safety back there or to play in a, in a system where he's the you're, you're playing the cover two uh, or it's two men under and, you know, two safeties deep. I, you, it, it, he's got to be a moving piece. If, if there is a single high, you want him back there. But I think this is a guy you have to move around. He has to be a main cog in that defense, right? I like to pick I, simply because they need they need talent sure. right, across the board. Period. Sure. Yeah, I, I think with with respect to your concern about his, the, the the way ultimately he's deployed, this is one of those spots where I think that that they will be able to get the most out of his versatility, and and that and that is the, the, outside of the 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 rare physical tools right and and the football iq and the playmaking ability it's the versatility that that has him arguably as a top you know prospect in the class and and dean P's, you know obviously what 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 you see pre-snap is not what you get post-snap with right. dean P's. and and i think hamilton That's is it. kind of that 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 bishop or that that knight on a chess table that you can move around and do a number of different things you know with you know what i'm saying so yep. it, th are there some other areas that that could potentially be addressed certainly but but when you're talking about a guy that that you know like i said is arguably the top player in the entirety of the draft on a team that has a dearth of talent um in this particular landing spot i certainly understand it and, and i and i and i actually like it this 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 is where i think kyle hamilton needs to go Anything before this, I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of. Despite as talented as he is, I'm, I'm just not a fan of, of the landing spot in relation to where those teams are. And, and of course, when we're talking about the offensive line or being able to affect the passes, those things always receive priority as far as I'm concerned. Damian Parsons has the Broncos selecting Derek Stingley. Now, yeah. Drew, I'm, I'm going to give you the floor on this one. I, I, I know, I know you, you have for lack of a better term, soured on Derek Stingley to a certain degree. What right. do you think about him being a, a, a top 10 pick at this juncture? Uh, <laughs> where's Sauce at? Where my, where my guy Sauce at? Where, where so, you got Sauce at? So, so uh, Andrew Booth, so I, I'm going to say this. If we're talking in terms of talent, mm. the smoothness, the, the fluidness, everything that you want in a corner, the size... The ability to mirror just just the, the movements, as we like to say, as Haley, uh, CPGM Haley likes to say, the movements. He, he has it, right? And so when I see him go higher than any corner, I, I'm I'm not. I get it. I get you it. You understand because, it. You understand yeah, be, it. Be, because we've seen him at his best mm. freshman year. Mm. Best corner in the country. No questions asked, right? If he was able to come out that year. He's first corner off the board. Is he? I don't know. Who, I, I I don't know. I don't know who was drafted that year, but I, I challenge against any corner he would have gone against. Hit me down in the comment section. Fair enough. We can have a discussion about it. Uh, but lately, he's either been injured, or it's a question about you know him. I won't say taking plays off, just kind of aloof. You know what I mean? Like what, what what's going on? You know what I mean? So, and, and again, I think about all the the corners that the Broncos have, and 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 you know, I want to give the article away, you know, because I do want you guys to go there and check out DP Definitely. stuff. Um, but you know, some some guys may be leaving, you know, and, and you got to replace those guys. So I get it, uh, but I I don't I don't hate the pick, man. It, it, any team that needs a corner, and you go Derek Stanley Jr. before any other corner. I know why you're picking him, and I'm I'm okay with it. But I just wouldn't go there. I tend to be in the same boat. I also understand Damien's thought process here. Um, you, you alluded to it, and, and the link to, to his post, his, his uh, mock draft, is down in the description. Make sure you click on that, support it. It's the pedigree, man. PS2 on the other side. You just got just the polish. The polish. Brother clean, and bro. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You, you put Stingley and PS2 in the same draft class, I'm going with PS2. That's just me. <laughs> that's just me but but the question would be why 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 yeah why I, I, the, the consistency the consistency okay, okay. you know what all i'm right. saying like like you, you alluded to it you know what i mean you know and then and ps2 gives you a little bit more size as well you know what i'm saying and, and but, I but, think, hold on stingly freshman year though over ps2 hey man look <laughs> all right look I, it's close it's close okay. but but i all i right. just 
It's close. It's very close. But but my point is is that is that Stingley, to your point, he has all of, of the measurables, he has all of the ability, whatever the case may be, but there, there's an inherent polish to his game that it, that other the, the other defensive backs don't have. You know what I'm saying? When he's on, he does everything right. Right. Technically. You know right. what I'm saying? It, you, you generally don't get all of the physical tools and traits with all of the technical precision and polish you know what i'm saying together and like i said when he's right when he's on you get you get that perfect marriage now the question is are you getting that after a couple of you know you know up and down type of years and and some injuries are you getting that i I, like i said before i think teams are going to bet on the talent i I think teams are going to bet on the talent man this is this is what scouts are doing this is what organizations are doing they're placing an emphasis on on traits and like i said when you can marry traits with evidence of the technical prowess teams are going to probably go in that direction so so i certainly understand the selection is, is there any other position that you would prioritize over corner here for the broncos uh maybe linebacker yeah uh offensive that's where i'm at. Line maybe one of the two it that's depends on what at. they do a quarterback but yeah yeah, it could go quarterback. It's it's, it's a it's a value based thing though. It's it's a value based thing. If you if you're just talking about you know uh, an off the ball linebacker, um, I don't know that all thirty two with with the need because there is a need here um, would go in that particular direction. But you know there's a guy by the name of Devin Lloyd who I think can do a whole lot more than just be you know a tackling machine. You know what I'm saying? I think he can make a difference in terms of your pass rush as well. Of course, there's no Von Miller. Bradley Chubb has been injured over the last couple of seasons. That right. that might be the direction I go. But but certainly, I I, I understand the pick of, of Stingley, and I, and I expect him to go early. I expect him to go early, despite despite some some shaky tape over the last couple of years. All right, with the tenth overall pick, rounding out the top ten, New York Jets are making that second pick, and we talked about perhaps them going receiver here. Damien, they basically decided that we're going back to the trenches this time on the defensive side of the ball with David Ajabo. Listen, um, I bought this thing from Amazon um, and it was, you know, because I'd be doing all the cooking, right? So um, I chef it up, you know, I yeah. do, do some of that. Fried the fricassee? Fried the fricassee, you know about it? Yeah. Uh, and and <clears throat> it's these tools, it's 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 a, it's a, um, there's a big spoon in there. It's a little <laughs> brush for your barbecue, rub your oils and your different things. <laughs> Um, spatula in there, you know. What I mean, just a bunch of different stuff. I ain't even. I don't even know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna have to. You, you, just, it. you just got figure, it. Figure. I got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a yeah. job. Yeah. He, he's that. He has all these different tools and different things that he's gonna bring every single play to the point where Officer Lime is like, bro, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm not sure how to prepare for this guy because he he's coming with a plan every play. Oh, A, a didn't work. Okay, well I'm gonna go to B. Well, if B didn't work. Well, I'm gonna go to C. And he, sometimes he'll make it to D, bro, on one play because mm. it's just he, he, there's no quit extreme motor. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mach 6 out here, just I'm not going to stop. I'm going to bring everything, including the kitchen sink, every play, and you're going to have to deal with me. Um, you know, the only issue that you, you wonder is can he stop the run, right? Uh, and that may be due to some size, some technical, some 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 technique things. Uh, and those are the things I think that, you know, with a guy that can pass rush the way he can, we'll fix that or, or we'll, we'll, we'll hide him a little bit until we can get that addressed. Um, I, I don't mind this. Uh, and, and we know what the Jets defense looked like last year without a pass rush. Obviously, they lost Carl Lawson. Carl Lawson. I think it was that, that was before the season even started. Yeah. It was in, in uh, preseason. Um, preseason. Mm-hmm. And, and that was unfortunate for them. And it was a huge blow because you're going to play that cover three defense. You're going to play zone defense in general. You need to have a pass rush, period. Absolutely. You know, and yeah. if you don't have it. Everyone else suffers, and then they had injuries in the secondary. Just it was just went from bad to worse for them. And adding a Jabo, I think, is you know, it is in terms of making the in terms of him coming off the edge. I like it, um, but I probably would have went elsewhere in terms of receiver. Okay, fair, fair enough. I, you know, the, the the question, the lingering concern here with Ajabo is going to be the fact that it's only one year of production, like, like like no production prior to this past year. He played opposite Aiden Hutchinson. You know, a top, a, a top 10 pick, a top 10 pick with a guy who has not proven it over time is is considered risky. It, it is considered risky. But but to your point, there seems to be a lot to work with here. And 
And playing him on a, on a defensive line that includes a Carl Lawson and a Quinton Williams, you know, he's going to get plenty of one-on-one -on -one opportunities. You know what I mean? It's going to be a question of whether or not he's going to actually be able to convert them the way he did playing in the Big Ten at the NFL level. All right. Next up, the Washington Commanders are selecting Kenny Pickett according to yeah. Damian Parsons' mock draft. And we've had this conversation before. You know, they, they need they need more than Heineke, as far as I'm concerned. I, I think Kenny Pickett is probably your most prepared to go immediately quarterback, perhaps not the highest ceiling, but but certainly ready to play sooner than all of the rest of quarterbacks, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, you can debate, you can de debate Sam Howell, potentially. Uh, but, but, but certainly, I like the pick here. What do you, what do you think about it? Yeah, I like the pick too, and 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 hit me down in the comment section if I'm wrong. The system that they run over there at Washington is is a West Coast offense, so it's a short to intermediate type game. They kind of keep everything kind of enclosed and and take their shots down the field when they can, and, and they have some weapons and the different things that they do. I I think that Kenny Pickett would be a perfect match for them, you know. Here, so I I, I can't I don't see a scenario where they don't go quarterback outside of, um, you know, trading for one. Sure. Um, and, I, and I don't know that they've been in any of those talks um, when you talk about the different quarterbacks that possibly could be on the market. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to assume in every mock, it's going to be uh, it's going to be quarterback and it's going to be a Kenny Pickett, a Matt Coral. And I don't think I've seen Malik Willis go to them in any mocks that I've seen, but maybe I've missed those mocks. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think that there's so much controversy swirling around, you know, that organization off the field. Right. That that this this seems to be one of those, you know, the need kind of meets everything, right? In terms of we need a face of the organization. We need to improve the quarterback position. You know, Ron Rivera needs a guy that's gonna be his guy, you know what I'm saying, moving forward as opposed to kind of a more of an experimental guys in ter in terms of Heineke and short term answers, as was kind of the plan with Fitzpatrick. So I think this selection is definitely gonna be a quarterback. I, I think, you know, in all likelihood for my purposes, it'd probably be the first quarterback taken off the board. Next up with the 12th overall pick, uh, the Vikings select the cornerback. That, that that seems to be the trend, right? And in this case, Damian Parsons has them selecting Andrew Booth. And, you know, coming into this particular draft, you know, at the onset of mock draft season, you know, Andrew Booth was probably cornerback one um, here at Cafetato General Manager. You know, rare, mm -hmm. rare athletic. I mean, the super twitchy, man. Just, just, you could see, you could see just... In every movement, it doesn't have to be, you know, a full blown, you know, sprint or leaping or whatever. Just in every single movement, the way he's on the balls of his feet at all times, you could see just the, the athleticism oozing out of him and and rare boss ball, ball skills. You know, I, I think I think the Vikings clearly have a need here. The question is, do they have other areas that that they should prioritize? Let's talk about Booth first, and then let me know what you think in terms of perhaps going in a different direction as far as a position, especially with Kirk Cousins in talks of being traded. Yeah, uh, Booth, I mean, you, you said it. Uh, I, I think that playing for Clemson and any cornerback that plays for Clemson, I think they, in terms of a, a full evaluation standpoint, I think they do those guys a disservice. There's a lot of, you know, I, I, that may change this year because they lost. Uh, uh, Venables. Yeah, Venables, too, was at Oklahoma, right? So, yep. You know, uh, good for them, by the way. Tired of seeing that trash over there at defense. But um, <laughs> I, I think the ceiling for him is is much higher than most people think um, because he played so much zone. It was just you just saw a lot of clicking and closing. Uh, but like you said, you saw the swag. You, you saw the, the 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 twitchiness. The ball skills is is uh, insane, bro. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a cornerback better than him in this class in terms of those ball skills. It, it looks like he's a receiver out there. It just looks yep. easy for him, man. And, and the explosiveness, jump. I mean, it's just it's jumping out the gym. He's gonna blow up the combine. I have a feeling. Oh that. yeah. And people oh, yeah. gonna say, wait a minute, let me let me let me reassess because people are, are kind of lower on Booth. I see some people. It's either you're really high or you're kind of yeah. low on. Yeah, him, nothing, I mean? in, nothing in between, right? There's no nothing in between with him. No, in between, yeah. No, so I think the combine will do do him uh, do him well. But in terms of where else he could have gone, I want to say quarterback. But they remember, and, and I'm gonna say this: they were trying to get Justin Fields last year, wasn't able to kind of get where they wanted to get. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did draft a uh, quarterback from Texas a &M, What was his name? Um, Kellen Mond, is he that, the answer? It but always that group's not there. Me... That group's not there anymore. GM, coach, they out of there. That is true. That's not my guy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not my guy. 
I'm always worried when teams kind of draft a quarterback in the in the you know mid to late round. It's kind of like, oh, is, is this still a guy? Is it not a guy? Mm-hmm. You know, and then like you said, you know, with the ousting of the coach and the, the GM, it's like, okay, well, if I'm a GM and I'm a coach. Do we really want this guy? Do we, you know, what, you know? So it, this this might be a team that that goes left. This might yeah. be a team that kind of changes the draft in terms of, hey, this is what we think is happening. Maybe they don't go corner and they go elsewhere. I know they right. need a corner. That's for damn sure. Sure. And, and there's a lot of there's a lot of good corners in this draft, so maybe they feel that way as well. So right, so right. We'll, we'll we'll go with a guy that we think can change our franchise right now, which might be a quarterback. Yeah. But I, I I'm gonna expect them to draft a, a cornerback. But yeah. you know we'll, we'll see. And, and, and trading Kirk Cousins obviously would push them into the quarterback market. In of that course. Case, so of yeah. course. Yeah. I, I, to your point regarding Andrew Booth, in my in my humble opinion, I think Booth can be the best corner in this class. Yeah. He's 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 super talented. He's super talented. I, I think to your point, the fact that they played an overwhelming amount of zone. Um, Clemson was a very good defensively, but but of right. course they weren't. You know, they weren't really contending this particular year. Didn't have the quarterback play that they've enjoyed over the last I don't know six years or so. I think he kind of got lost in translation a little bit, a little bit. But I think those that know. Especially after this combine, assuming that that he, he runs well because he's gonna jump out the gym. He's, he's yep. gonna he's gonna have some ridiculous vertical leap and broad jump and it's gonna be insane. It's gonna be insane what he does. But but like I said, assuming that 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 forty that straight line speed looks good to, to everybody, he's one of those guys who could fly up the board. He, he's one of those guys. Who could, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if Booth isn't the first corner off the board. You know what I'm saying? He's he's probably gonna have those types of measurables. And like I said, in terms of his film. Um, just, just rare ball skills. You, you, you know, people are talking about Trevon Diggs. A lot of conversation about Trevon Diggs. A lot of hyperbole about Trevon Diggs. But you can't take away the fact that he has great ball skills. You know what I'm saying? And I think the fact that you can steal possessions, I, I think that's something that scouts are, are going to place more emphasis on moving forward. You know what I mean? You know, being able to take that ball away makes a difference, man. All right. Next up, we have the Browns, and this is kind of that 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 sweet spot for a receiver. We're not anticipating Jarvis Landry back. Odell Beckham obviously is a Super Bowl champion with the Los Angeles Rams now. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones, you know, is more of a, a secondary type of option. Traylon Burks, you know, there, there, there's there's perhaps a lack of polish here, but he he has that A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf kind of thing going for him. And I think given, the, you know, a, 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 the right opportunity in the right system, I think he could be a problem in short order what do you think yeah da- damn the polish bro damn the polish and, and the thing is 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 Tra- Traylon Burks he got the benefit of being used in a myriad of ways at Arkansas he was the guy he was the weapon for that team offensively sure and teams you know offensive coordinators wide receiver coaches head coaches looking at this guy like damn we could we could do so much with him right you know what I'm saying he's not just a guy that's gonna line up on the slide he's not a guy that can line up on the left side or the right side like he's a guy we're gonna move around can you say Debo Samuel? I mean, fantasy community probably saying if that. If you want to do this thing right, if you want to right. do this thing right, and you want to get the right. most out of Traylon Burks, and that isn't to say that I don't think Traylon Burks could be just fine as a, as a X. Right. You know, right. You, you put him on the on the boundary, and and I think he'd be I think he'd be quality there. But but he is special with the ball in his hands, right. and and you know he's put together differently, man. So yes, I I would like to get him the ball any number of different ways. To your point, yeah. yeah. Next up, we have the. Baltimore Ravens, and they are the ones who are opting for Ahmad Gardner. Now, Ahmad Gardner, I think, in a lot of circles, is now considered cornerback one as teams, or rather, uh, evaluators have, prognosticators have, have somewhat soured, thrown a little cold water on the Derek Stingley thing. Again, to your point, Andrew Booth is kind of, you know, the poles, the polar opposites in terms of the opinion. They either really like him, or he's more of a end of the first round guy, you know, the mid mid to late twenties type of guy. Gardner, Gardner has been throughout the mock draft season has been considered, you know, cornerback one for the most part. You know, right. it's either him or Stingley, right? What do you think about the landing spot here in Baltimore? Clearly, there's a need. Uh, we love what Gardner does. Check out the scouting report on the channel. Um, th- th- there's a certain dog mentality that I really appreciate from Gardner. Of course, he was very, very accomplished at Cincinnati. Gave up literally nothing throughout his career. But is this an area where where you where you looking for maybe like a Charles Cross, or somebody who could help out, you know, that offensive line that that Lamar Jackson struggled behind? What do you think? 
Yeah, I'm probably going off the line, and here's why. Just just thinking through it, is as hurt as that defense was for the Ravens, they still were in competition to the very end in terms of making the playoffs. The problem was offensively, man. Like you can't protect your quarterback. You couldn't run the ball like you you wanted to, and that changes what the Ravens want to do. Like Ravens aren't a team that can just kind of change and move on the fly. Everything's kind of built around their system, and and if they can't block things up they can't protect the quarterback it kind of just kind of falls apart and then and then enough is already on the quarterback's shoulders so now we're going to put more on his shoulders by not you know having the the requisite offensive line to protect him and so he can get the ball out i mean damn it, it would it would really hurt to pass up a corner in the mod gardener here but damn bro like like they did make the playoffs it wasn't because of their defense as far as i'm concerned it was because of their offense and if they made it into the playoffs were they really going to be a team that was going to you know, sure. affect anybody? Like, I, I don't think so. You know what I mean? And, and again, they, they, they fired their defensive coordinator and, and this may be going along right along with that. Hey, man, like, we, we you know, listen, uh, it can't be we're going to do what we, we want to do. Like, we need to change some things. We need to adjust some things. And, you know, maybe they can go pass rusher here as well because they didn't really have that either. You know what I mean? So it's it's quarter, uh, quarterback. It's, it's offensive line, corner, or pass rusher for them. Yeah, and, and I think if that's the case, if you're looking at it from that perspective, then it's about, okay, who's the top guy on my board? And and you could certainly make the argument that Gardner is the guy here. You know what I'm saying? Right. To your point, they, they, they had uh, you know just an amazing rash of injuries at the corner position. They were on their sixth, seventh guys. You know what I'm saying? They were converting safeties to play some corners. Practice squad is being called up to play corner at the end of the year. And, you know, again, when you're facing the likes of Jamar Chase and, and T. Higgins and, and, and the way Bengals were, were dropping points on them, I think I think this is a bit of a, a okay. We need to make sure that you know we have someone outside of Marlon Humphrey who can actually match up. You know what I'm saying? I think this team would do well to bring back Anthony Averett and add a corner to to really help themselves out here. But but I think I think Averett will have a pretty good market in free agency. He might he might be too rich for their blood to be honest with you. He, he played well prior to his injury, so yeah, I, I'm I'm okay with it. I, I I would love to be able to bolster that offensive line, but again. Considering what you're saying, you know what I mean? If, if we're talking about a, a couple, you know, two to three position groups, then you're thinking in terms of, okay, who's my best player on the board? It's hard to argue with the Mark Gardner pick here for the Ravens. Okay, so now we have the Eagles up with the first of three first-round picks, and Trevon Walker, edge rusher from Georgia, is the guy here. Now, now this is very, very, very much an athletic profile traits associated pick i don't i don't want to necessarily dismiss that that the, the production here but but it's right. not an overwhelming amount of production so you know th this is a this is certainly a projection but as i mentioned before dp he said he learned his lesson i'm, I'm i bet on traits man at, at, at especially at edge especially at edge I'm, I'm gonna bet on traits so what do you think about walking to the eagles here yeah I'm, I'm gonna speak to that production piece and, and a lot of that is you know it's one thing to be the guy on the team, the the the, the guy on the, the defense or the offense, and you don't produce. But it's another thing to be a guy on a team with a bunch of other guys and you don't produce. But I'm watching everything that you're doing and everything that you're doing can translate over to the to to the the uh, the NFL. I, like this guy plays with a, a level of of violence and and high motor. And, and when I say high motor, I don't mean like you know, the normal high motor that people like to tag. It's like, he's another one of these guys where it's like, bro, can you just, bro, like, I need yeah. you to relax, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, <laughs> the play's going the other way, bro. There's no right. way you're going to make a play, but here right. you go with this, like, stop. You know what I'm saying? And it, he's got all the physical, the, the, the trace. It's like, he's, it's, it's, I like the fit for the Eagles. And I think that if you're going to play the the zone that they play, the the absurdity, the the, the, the absurd amount of zone that yes. these these guys yes, play, I mean, it's, it's it's ridiculous. Like it's uh, to me, it's unacceptable, right? But if you're going to play that, uh, you better have some guys coming off the edge that can affect the passer so that that zone can actually work, versus just getting dink and dunk. Uh, uh, what do we call it? Deaths by a thousand cuts all the yep. way down the field until you get gutted at the end, right? It just doesn't make sense to me. So. Uh, if you're going to do that, you got to be able to rest the passer. All right. So, so obviously the Eagles are are getting after it. They, they they have quite a few unrestricted free agents here along the defensive line as well. So, so certainly need to replenish the their their pass rush here. Now, 
Now they pair that up with the 16th overall pick in Trent McDuffie. You made mention of it, the overwhelming amount of zone that they play from a coverage standpoint, McDuffie yeah. slides right into that with an exceptional click and close. And and he has some man chops as well, but but certainly he, he, he seems like a, a perfect fit in terms of what they're doing defensively in Philadelphia. Yeah, th this is where uh, need meets the board. Like it just it, it makes too much sense. Like you said, he, he's he's probably the, he might be the, the best. I'm gonna say he's the best zone corner in the draft, hands down, no question. Period. Easy, and he can tackle. Yeah, he he likes to tackle. Yeah, and he likes to <laughs> go. I just say yeah. it that way. Yeah. 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 You know. You know who who I, I to this day I think is the best tackling or the most violent tackling corner that I watch. I know there are guys that that. Before my time, we're, we're you know clotheslining guys and things of that nature, uh, which which I, I I certainly can appreciate. But but in, in terms of my time, it was a smaller guy. You know, McDuffie's not a huge corner, but he he was just so incredibly adept and physical Winfield? and fearless. Yes, Antoine right, yeah. Winfield. Yeah, bro. I know. I know. <laughs> Antoine Winfield, man. I mean, textbook tackling, yeah. man. Beast, bro. Bigger, yeah. big guys guys that he's given 40 50 60 pounds up to that yeah. matter that yeah. matter mcduffie kind of has that same type of relentlessness in terms of attacking the ball carrier or the, or the receiver you know what i'm saying once they become a ball carrier right. all right moving right along and damian parsons inaugural draft for the draft network his th this is our reaction to his mock draft right. the los angeles chargers are up with the 17th overall pick and he has them selecting Big old interior defensive lineman, Jordan Davis. It is well documented how much the Chargers have struggled to stop the run. You drop Davis in there, ultimately, you know, and 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 seemingly that is a big step in the right direction in terms of mitigating the, 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 the issues they've had, slowing down the opposition's running game. We've talked about this a lot. I am of the mindset that you trade down in this case because I believe he is more two down than he is three down. But considering the, the 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 chargers you know ineptitude in terms of being able to stop the run i certainly understand i don't like it here at 17 i prefer it a little later in the first round if we're going to do first round at all here um uh, but but certainly the the need is there the need is definitely there yeah uh in my first mock i had jordan davis going to these guys if i'm not mistaken check that out uh and don't forget to like and subscribe comment down in the hit us down in the comment section and if i said you know somebody's name inappropriately or incorrectly i should say hit me down in the comment section with the, the phonetics i'm all about it um uh, words are hard uh but yeah I, i'm with you in terms of uh, well nah man go get your guy bro go get your guy bro if that if that's and, and the thing about the charges is they're not far off from like being one of those teams where it's like because if they would have made the playoffs it's like oh they might get a little well, shaky here but the problem is, is they can't stop the run like <laughs> the boys marshmallowy soft marshmallowy soft yeah you know what i mean yes. uh it was Pepper like mache. uh, Pepper Pepper mache. Mache. uh, uh yes. what is it a hot knife through butter mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i think maybe the thought process here if we can sure that up we'll be fine and it's a, and it's a defense also that's learning a new scheme you know what i mean so there's going to be some holes there but you 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 um you add insult to injury when you can't stop the run. People not in their gaps doing what they need to do, and I think Jordan Davis would be a big add here. I'm trying to think where else would I have gone here. I think I think you 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 could stand to improve your offensive line. I think you could go receiver here. There's a guy by the name of uh, Drake London that I think you know, oh, you would, know? Be, would be interesting. Interesting. You know, a little West Coast love here. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple of different areas you could go. You know what I'm saying? In terms of right. in terms of bolstering the, the, the team on either side of the ball. Um, there's a question at linebacker. I know folks, you know, might not be necessarily in favor of drafting a linebacker here at this juncture, considering that they drafted Kenneth Murray, but Kenneth Murray ain't playing. Right. You know what I'm saying? It and, must and, that, great. and that and that also speaks to your run defense, right? Um my, my point regarding Jordan Davis here, and, and part of the reason why I, I I don't want to beat up the player. I think Jordan Davis is exceptional at what he does. I don't know that you have to put this type of draft capital into getting a player to do what he does. You understand what I'm saying? I think you can go the unrestricted free agent route. I think you can get a, a pair of veterans. I think Travis you can Jones. make better use, Travis Jones, in, in round two. I, you know, I think you can make better use of this particular pick, is, is my point. 
you know. And like I said, even if you do want to draft Jordan Davis in the first round, I, I am of the mindset that you trade down. Get, get some more additional draft capital, help you round out your roster, add some depth elsewhere. Um, you know, take advantage of some of the depth in some of the other areas in this particular draft class, and then also get your, your run-stopping defensive tackle. You know, that's just my thought process. Anyway, moving right along, we have the Saints with the 18th overall pick. And DB has him drafting Matt Corral. Of course, there's a huge vacancy here as far as quarterback is concerned. Um, I think it's one of those things where you just kind of take your pick at this juncture. Are you a Sam Howell guy? Do you like what Desmond Ritter did, you know, in terms of building his draft stock after a strong week at the Senior Bowl? Um, Matt Corral is a guy that we had hoped to see, but unfortunately got injured in the bowl game. He's he's kind of the, I wouldn't say wild card, but I think, I think the fact that we haven't seen him has actually increased the intrigue in him. For him, yeah. Yes. yes. Especially when, you saw, when you've seen everybody else and no one's kind Correct. of blown, in, blown the doors off. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, I, for the Saints, it's, it's one of two. It's either you're going to go a receiver or you're going to go a quarterback. And right now we have no idea who the hell the quarterback's going to be. We don't know what that team's really going to look like. You know, they're in cap hell. You know what I mean? So it's like, where do you kind of, where do you kind of start, right? Where, where, where do you go? And and Taysom Hill just, I mean, John Payton got him paid and got the hell out of Dodge. You know what I mean? Hey, so man. I did, get, give him a, give him a, head, <laughs> a, a fist bump and got, got yeah. out of there. So I, I'm assuming he'll be ready for pro day, but I don't know. Knock on wood for him. Somebody let me know down in the comment section. Uh, but it, this team is definitely going to take a step back, but I, 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 I'm okay with the pick. I'm comfortable with it. Is, is there any quarterback, other quarterbacks? So obviously Pickett and Willis off the board here. Is there another quarterback that you would select over Corral here? Maybe Sam Howe. That's a you know, it's a maybe. Okay. Maybe a Sam yeah. Howe, but he's he'll probably go in the second round somewhere. I would imagine. So yeah, yeah. Uh, th- this team, I don't know, bro. <laughs> the, the, I mean. <laughs> It's a lot. It's a Listen, lot going it's, on. It's a lot. They got work yeah. to do. They have work yeah. to do. So, so we're not anticipating Teron Armstead to be there. Uh, Alvin Kamara has some legal troubles. Uh, mm-hmm. They, they, they are welcoming Michael Thomas back with opening arms. I don't know that they, they have a choice per se, considering the, 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 the way things are set up from a contractual and, and salary cap standpoint. There are a lot of question marks here, and and it would be tough. I think it's going to be tough, assuming you don't have. Kamara in the lineup. We, we, again, we don't really know where Michael Thomas's headspace is. It, it'd be tough. It'd be tough. But, but, I, but I think you have to get started sooner rather than later. later. I, I'm, I'm, I am warming up more and more to the idea of the, of the Saints trading back. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm moving. I am warming up more and more to that because, like I said, they they have some unique challenges that most other organizations just simply aren't facing this particular year. The 19th overall pick, the Philadelphia Eagles, are making their third first-round pick, and DB has them selecting Kenyon Green to your offensive lineman for Texas A&M. Okay, so Jason Kelsey is out. Brandon Brooks retires. You got to do something here. I think they have the, at least one replacement in place, right, as far as those two players. But but the, the Philadelphia Eagles, at their height here recently, they, they boasted one of the best, if not the best, offensive line in the league. I think you got to get back to that in order for Jalen Hurst to take the next step in order for them to really get the ball to the playmakers, i.e. Devontae Smith. They got to be able to protect and and get movement up front in terms of the running game, get back to being more balanced. Um, I, I think I think ultimately this past year when they ran the ball, they had a lot of success, but they need to be able to generate more passing plays down the field and, and they have to protect Jalen Hurts in order to do so. I can tell you right now, Eagle fan ain't happy right now because uh drake london is yeah. not coming to the team <laughs> yeah. not coming to the team bro yeah. uh yeah y'all got another year jalen Rager. get ready um quest watkins man <laughs> quest watkins got you don't 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 worry about it quest got you you know listen uh you, you gotta show up the office line i mean come on man it, 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 people leaving retiring all these you gotta you gotta do right like, you can't again you're, you're still you're still in the evaluation process of jalen hurts you want to make sure you can you can do that with um, protecting him. Yeah, I certainly understand the angst. Um, we actually have a, a poll up on the community page regarding uh, <laughs> Eagles pick. Eagles pick, and and and, and it's razor thin, man. They're, they're talking. We're talking Linderbaum. We're talking Drake London. We're talking about edge rusher. Like it, it is razor thin between 
which direction to go there. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think ultimately in this particular mock draft, they, they're netting a defensive uh, edge player who can come in and, and help contribute in terms of the pass rush, replace some some veterans there. Um, they get their corner opposite Darius Slay, which is obviously a question mark for them as well. And then with this pick, they 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 managed to to solidify the interior of that offensive line. And again, you know that's the most important position group. So, you know, perhaps perhaps day two. Hope that that receiving core outside of Devontae Smith and of course what Goddard brings to the table in terms of being a tight end. All right. Moving into the twenties, we're getting there. We're getting there, Drew. Uh, with the twentieth overall pick, DB has the Steelers selecting Charles Cross. Now, what I've noticed certainly, I I. I'm a fan of the selection because the Steelers need to improve their offensive line. There's no Period. question about it, right? right? Absolutely need to improve their offensive line. Of course, there is a glaring hole at quarterback. I'm gonna I'm gonna work through this with the assumption that they they address it via via a veteran, right? Whether it be Buffalo or Kirk Cousins and Aaron Rodgers, whomever whomever it might be. I think you know we you know Deshaun Watson. Those types of conversations are starting to pick up a little bit more as well. So. We're, with the assumption that the Steelers address the quarterback position via trade or free agency, Charles Cross, I'm seeing him top 10, in some instances top 5 or 6, or I'm seeing him in the 20s. I'm not really seeing anything in between with respect to Charles Cross. Why Why? Why so, so much polarity associated with Charles Cross? You're graded on two things, your run and your pass blocking, right? And he's overwhelmingly a good pass blocker because of the scheme he was coming from uh, from Mississippi State. He had no choice. They were throwing the ball or attempting to throw the ball over all over the yard, right? And so it you know it depends on the person in terms of how they feel about that. You know what I mean? Like he's he's, he's not the best run blocker, but you know is he, is he serviceable? You know when they're looking at the tape, is that is that what they're seeing? Is he serviceable? Is he terrible? I, you know what I mean? And and pass blocking, you know he's one of the best in the class. You know what I mean? So how how do you look at that? Where what is the um, how do you, I mean, we're in a passing league, you know what I mean? So I, I think I would take that over a guy who can run block the hell out of somebody, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, it just depends on the person and how they feel about those two things and and and, and what tape they've watched as well, too. That kind of comes into it, too. That, that, does, that does play a factor, to your point. I don't think there's a lack of, of want to or desire or anything like that. I think, you know, he, he, there's some things that he needs to improve upon as far as, you know, run blocker, but I don't think it's beyond his his scope is beyond his aptitude at any stretch of the imagination you understand what i'm saying and like i said if we're talking about arguably the best pass protect sign me up man they they, right. they were bad yes of course it's well documented that they haven't been able to get a consistent push he's not a road grader right, right. but but i think he can certainly develop into a quality run blocking tackle and and I, I will take that if he's an excellent pass protector absolutely right. no question about it so next up DP has the New England Patriots selecting Devin Lloyd. I love the player. Could they stand to improve at the second level? Typically, they don't they don't put a whole lot of high-end capital in that particular position. Not as of late. Not as of late, right? They got a glaring need at receiver, man. I, I love Devin Lloyd, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure I, I, I would be going in this particular direction here for New England. What do you think? The rover or the moving piece or the golden piece within that defense it's usually either on the defensive line or it's a safety. It's not a linebacker, right? A linebacker, I need you to do this and this only for this game right here. Next game, we'll change it up to something different, but it's very like, okay, I need you to do this type of thing, um, you know, depending on the down and distance. Uh, with Devin Lloyd, I think he's a guy you could, he could be the moving piece. He could be the guy that's kind of the, the, the you know, the, the, the piece that makes the defense go. I don't think that New England wants to do that, though. Right. Sure. I think they're going to stay the course in terms of what they do, uh, because, you know, the Hall of Fame coach is there doing his thing. I definitely did. I just don't know how you pass up on any of these receivers here, because, again, we got to we, part of protecting your quarterback is giving them the weapons that he needs and guys that are reliable. And, and right now they don't have that right now. You know what I mean? Whether it be because guys aren't where they're supposed to be or just can't freaking get open. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, And now they've lost their offensive coordinator to the Raiders as the head coach in Josh McDaniel. So it's like, all right, well. Like, damn, what are we doing, number one? Number two, like, I need a reliable guy, bro. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of reliable guys on the board right now. And linebacker, I, I feel like the Patriots can kind of get that figured out on defense. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean? 
Yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I don't want to take anything away from Devin Lloyd. I think Devin Lloyd is a top ten. Baller. It's baller. That goes like top ten. I, I think, right. I, and I wouldn't blink an eye. I wouldn't blink an eye. But but in terms of, to your point, historically, what Bill Belichick has been able to do with, with guys playing a particular role at that second level, um, I, I, I shy away from that considering the glaring need and, of course, the board marrying up with that need at the receiver position. Now, the, the, the argument that I would make for Devin Lloyd is what you could potentially do with him as a pass rusher. That's the argument that I would make with respect to that. I, I think he offers something there that, that perhaps some of these other off-the-ball linebackers don't. And I think everybody's going to be looking for the next Michael Parsons. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody's going to be looking for that type of skill set. You know, to your point, that moving chess piece at the second level who, who can obviously make plays sideline to sideline, but then, you know, in obvious passing situations, be a difference maker there as well. Next up, you mentioned Josh McDaniels. He is now the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, and Damian Parsons has them selecting Jamison Williams, the speedster from Alabama. Now, we've talked about this at nauseum as well. That is the element that was missing from this team. The Raiders were missing that quintessential deep threat in terms of their offense. Of course, you got a little bit from Deshaun Jackson, but longer in the tooth. They tried Zay Jones there. That's not really his thing, although he, you know, he he, he did okay. Um, you got Hunter Renfro obviously making a lot of plays. Hopefully, Darren Waller gets back to who he was, you know, a couple seasons ago. Not necessarily the version we saw this year, um, dealing with a bunch of injuries. Williams come back from this ACL, man. He 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 has the type of speed that that changes field position very very quickly and and lights up scoreboards. Derek Carr was much more aggressive this year, given the opportunity. This could be this could be the piece that, that that unlocks this offense, man. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree, and I think the way that they were kind of using Henry Ruggs, I thought he could do a little bit more, but he he was the quintessential kind of deep threat for them. I think Williams. I, I, I'm hoping that they see him a little bit more than that. When you, when you have Josh McDaniels, who's going to be running that offense, I would assume should see him that way. And he's more of a uh, he's more polished than most people think. Oh, I, I need people to understand he's. He, he's coming from Ohio State, wide receiver U. And this man was out here like just like catching like five yard routes and like breaking tackles. You know what I'm saying? Usually guys with speed just like, oh, they just kind of ran past everybody. Nah, nah, bro. I was I was actually running through folks. And I don't mean running through folks, like running over folks, but like just being able to break tackles because he can get up to that speed immediately. You know what I mean? And he's a hard nosed runner too. Not that I want him to be doing all that, but um, it's just another element that he that he can bring to to the offense. Uh, and, you know, for some people, Williams actually could be the first receiver off the board if he doesn't, you know, tear the ACL. Sure, sure. Th there's a competitiveness in him that that doesn't gets overshadowed by the speed. Right. right? Yeah. You, you're so yeah. you're so in awe of of the acceleration and, and, and the stop start and, and the ability to just pull away from defenders. But. To your point, you know, you, you saw him on special teams as a gunner. Yeah. You know what he I'm wanted, saying? He wanted to play that. Absolutely. It, it, yeah. There's there's a certain level of dog, you know, and, and competitiveness that that you typically don't get out of out of receivers. Typically, you think receiver, and a lot of times you think diva. But I, I don't know that there's any divas in this class, man. You know what I'm saying? Not at the top anyway. A lot of these guys seem like you know the kind of hard hat, lunch pail type of guys, even though they have. You know, otherworldly athleticism, and in the case of Jamison Williams, just off the charts, speed and acceleration. Next up, the Arizona Cardinals, whom Damian actually covers. He has them selecting uh, Zion Johnson from Boston College, another senior bowl participant who acquitted himself incredibly well. Zion was very impressive. Uh, they played him at center, and, and he had never played center before, and, and he held his own. He didn't look like a fish out of water by any stretch of the imagination. The Cardinals have an issue. In terms of the interior of this offensive line, I think this is just this all just came together perfectly, in my opinion. Get it? <laughs> so I fell right into their lap, man. Like if this guy's on the board at this point in the draft, which he which he most might be, really might be. I think so you, you gotta you gotta scoop him. Um, guy can play the center, guy can play the little, little guard for you. And listen, uh, you know I, I know that Kyler Murray struggled in that playoff game, but that offensive line, I know that they're going against the world beaters in the in the. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams, but damn, can my man have some time? You know what I mean? Uh, like, like, uh, like, 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 at a certain point, it was just ghost now. Like, he's no longer the Colin Murray that you've seen um, through the season. It, it just, at a certain point, you're just like, all right, this game's over. You know what I mean? It wasn't over, but it was over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he knew, okay, they're, they're, they can't, they can't block. 
can't hold up. Yeah, can't hold it can't, up. It can't hold up. And, you know, we got some other concerns with the Arizona Cardinals in terms of that offensive uh, scheme and the play call and all that stuff. Yes. But, but yes. Um, you know, we're here to talk about Zion Johnson. So, but yeah, I, I think this is a match made in heaven for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Next up with the 24th overall pick, he has the Dallas Cowboys selecting George Carl Loftus, edge, interior, kind of does it all out of Purdue here. There's some question marks. You know, Randy Gregory could be hitting the market. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence still can get it done when healthy. Still can get it done when healthy. Um, you, you like Michael Parsons off the edge. You, you'd like to be able to free him up a little bit. Perhaps under Kobe Dean might be of interest to some in this particular spot. What, what do you think about Carl Loftus? And, and he's another one where it's kind of like, okay, either top 10 uh, Eagles... <laughs> <laughs> or late first round. What, what do you what do you think about Carl Loftus? Yeah, I, I get it. You know, he, he's he's not you know a bendy, flashy guy. Uh, he he's a you know what would you say earlier? Bring your your lunch pill, hard hat, lunch hard pill. hat lunch pill. And he's a guy that that has a plan um, on most plays, and he, he has violent hands and. Listen, this is a guy in terms of the Dallas Cowboys, you can kick inside and, and and Parsons come off the edge on his side. You know what I mean? On third downs, let's get it. You know, or in passing in, in passing situations. It doesn't have to be third down, but it could be just passing situations. And now you got now you got uh four guys on the on the defensive line that offensive line are like, okay, well, all right, now who who are we doubling? You know, who are we gonna chip? You know what I mean? You slow up the process of the running backs coming out of the backfield and it kind of changes things and and Dan Quinn you know, he, he's evolved as a coach, Absolutely. specifically defense, and he's just not going to sit back in the cover three. Like he, he's done a lot of things with that Dallas defense, and I think Karloftis would help to keep that um, going this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Karloftis really enables you to to play Legos here, yep. you know, and, and you know, if you guys haven't heard that term used before at, at, on this channel, what that means is just being so multiple. In terms of your defense, you know what I'm saying? You could be out in a NASCAR package. You could play an odd man front, an even man front. You could do a little 46. You could do any number of things because of the versatility associated with Karloftis, Parsons, even Demarcus Lawrence. You know what I'm saying? That, that There's a number of different things that you can do, and it really creates havoc for the offense. There's going to be things that you see that you, you simply couldn't prepare for. You know what I'm saying? Because of the versatility that that, that group offers. All right. With the 25th overall pick, the Buffalo Bills are on the clock. And Kyler Gordon. Kyler Gordon has now become a mainstay in the first round in mock drafts. Daniel, and, Daniel Jeremiah did it, bro. It's, it's, uh, yes. It, I, I do believe Daniel Jeremiah may have started that trend. But he is now a mainstay pushing out another guy that I, you know, I really... The guy, I, I, although I think he is actually in the first round in this one. But at any rate, he is, we've, seen, he is. we've seen Kyler Gordon climb, creep up. Uh, mock drafts as of late here. Buffalo does have a need. Levi Wallace is expected to hit free agency. Uh, Tredavious White is coming off the injury. What do you think about the fit here as far as the Buffalo Bills are concerned? Yeah, I, I think he would have fit in the old Buffalo defense where they ran a bunch of zone. I think he would he would fit in the, the now defense that they kind of they kind of mix it up. It's not. I think it's Leslie Frazier that's running the he's the defense coordinator there. If I'm not mistaken, maybe down in the yep. comment section. Um, it's I'm wrong. It's yeah. it. Okay. Uh, and, and Gordon is a guy who, you know, again, he's, he's play, playing for Washington. They, they, they do play a lot of zone. They, they want guys who can click and close, want guys to keep their eyes on the quarter. But to me, this is a guy who can do both. But I think he's more comfortable and better playing. Not that he needs to play press man, jam the receiver at the line, but I'm going I'm to hang on you, bro. I'm going to be right in your hip pocket. And then when a the quarterback throws the ball, I'm going to make a play on the football. Right. And uh, I think he would be a good a good fit for the Buffalo Bills, um, and you know, it, I, I like the fit, bro. Okay, all right. I I, I don't. You don't like the player. You don't like the the. No, uh, I just I just position. simply I just simply didn't like. No, I don't have a problem with with the 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 position, and and it'd be. It'd be irresponsible of me to say I don't like Kyler Gordon. I still have some more work to do on Kyler Gordon. However, the, what I have seen, I just, just so much zone, man. It's just too much yeah, it's, it's, bail it's, it's, technique, man. Mm -hmm. Just too much. Now, it's a conversation about traits. Do you believe he can translate 
what tape are you looking at? But what I have looked at thus far, I just I just am not a fan of the sheer amount of zone it's playing. It, it's the reason why I'm not as high on Trent McDuffie as some are to this point. I think, like I said, my evaluation, my study, I still have work to do from, from the perspective of the Washington corners. But yeah, as, as far as the position is concerned, it certainly makes sense. Could, would I, you know, think about perhaps, you know, addressing the offensive line? Certainly. Um, but but this team, this team is right there on the cusp. Man. You may disagree with me. I, I think they need to figure out something at the mic. Yeah, I, I know how you, <laughs> I know how you feel. You know, about you know how I feel about Tremaine Evans. Yeah, yeah. At this point, you he, know he, how he, I feel. He should have figured it out by now. And he just, he's always, yeah, not always, yeah. but especially in like crucial situations where it's like, bro, we, we got to have it there, bro. We can't, you can't, you know, be still kind of, it's not like he fell asleep or anything. It's just like he's still trying to head on swivel, like, hey, where, you know what I'm saying? And just misses it. Just misses it. Yeah, man. It. You know, yeah. I, I expect, I expect more. And, and and it's not as if there's, there's a lack of talent. I think the talent's right. there. No, it's there. It's there. You know what I'm saying? But but I just expect more from from you know the, the guy in the middle in a Sean McDermott or Leslie Fraser defense, whatever whatever you want to call it. I expect more. And listen, if if you want to get to the promised land, you you in all likelihood you're going to have to to you know compete with the likes of Kansas City and and Cincinnati. You know, moving forward, and and you know there's some teams that that are going to put your your linebackers. In compromising, situations. in compromising situations in terms of the passing game. You're not always going to be able to get downhill, per se, and you got to be able to hold up, and, and that's something that I think they need to address as well. So, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, Nicobe Dean is a guy that I think would, would, would fare well, maybe not necessarily your mic, per se, but would certainly help yeah. in terms of your second-level defense, um, whether it be against the run or the pass. And I like the depth at the corner position. You know what I mean? But, but you know, again, it's, it's a question about how you value Kyler Gordon here in this case because you also have a need at corner. All right. Next up, we have the Tennessee Titans. And Damian has them selecting Tyler Linderbaum. Now, Linderbaum seems to be earmarked for the latter parts of the first round in most mock drafts at this juncture. As far as I'm concerned, it's a steal. You know, they... they, they the Titans seem to figure out the run game regardless of who they have out there, right? But but you don't want to get carried away. You don't want to be one of those franchises, i.e. Pittsburgh, that yep. allows a position group of strength to erode because you don't pay close enough attention to it. So, you know, right here you get the, the, the best center in the class, you know, assuming that you're not necessarily including Zion because I think, you know, Zion is his, his preferred position, obviously, is guard. Tyler Linderbaum, I think, comes in, you drop him in immediately, and, and you stave off any deterioration associated with your offensive line. What do you think about the pick and, and the, the landing spot? No, I, I'm with you. Uh, I, I like the, the fit, the team. The only question I would have here is, what the hell are we doing at the quarterback position? That's it. Tannehill's okay. the guy, man. Tannehill, <laughs> right. Tannehill's the guy. My, my first pick in the my first pass in that in the playoff game is a pick, and my last pass in the playoff game is a pick. All yeah, right, no bueno. I, you know, one one position that, and I think I think I may have gone in this direction on our last mock draft, our, our head to last, our last head to head mock draft was receiver here. You know, yeah. I I know people are still anticipating. You know, just imagine AJ Brown and Julio, but they both have been banged up, man. Julio's had a, has enjoyed a career of it. But A.J. Brown has missed a lot of football as well. As talented, as gifted as he is, as dominant as he can be. I, I think this is an area where they may want to consider potentially adding another weapon here on the perimeter. That Jonu Smith isn't there anymore. Your top two passing options, injured. Derrick Henry, as the battering ram that he is, was injured this past year. You, you might want to add some more teeth you know, to this passing game. Because on that last INT, you, you were throwing it to someone other than Julio Jones and A.J. Brown. And, and that's not who you want to go to in that moment. You understand what I'm saying? So that that's another area that I would I would consider going here in the first round as well, considering exact all, all the receivers that remain on the board here. I, I would say to Tennessee fan, just think about that. And just think about – and, I, and I, there's, there's certain players in the league that are they're really good players, but they miss a lot of time. And you know what I say – you 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 that big? You moving that fast? Your body can your body keep up? Can your body maintain? Can you and you know? And I know AJ Brown is young. I'm just saying, are you really supposed to be that big, moving that fast, right? That consistently, sure. 
You know what I mean? Like that takes a toll on your body. And I think, uh, I think Julio uh, Jones is actually a, a prime example of that. And so oh, is Derwin James. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just a thought, man, because like it, it ain't nothing to be right. I, and again, I'll say this. I don't know that the Titans will be able to do what they did this year again next year. Right. I agree with that. Being able you know to I mean? re- replicate the effort and, yes. and how they were able to stay, you know, not just stay afloat, but, but, truly just continue to win games just right you to, 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 to garner w's considering all the pieces that were missing at various times i agree with you i agree with you and, and that's the reason why I, i'm leaning towards hey you know you may want to consider adding some more firepower to this offense and i don't want to suggest that that adding linderbaum doesn't help your offense it, obviously it does but but linderbaum is not necessarily scoring points he, he's he's not a guy who's going to be able to make a play Catch the ball, you know what I'm saying, at five yards and go the distance. You understand what I'm saying? So, like I said, considering what remains on the board at receiver, I'd be hard-pressed not to consider receiver at 26 for Tennessee. Speaking of receivers, the next three picks are all <laughs> wide receivers. The run has and begun. It, it, be, it has begun. And with the 27th overall pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are selecting Garrett Wilson. What do you think about that, Drew? Yeah, I mean, this is assuming, obviously, you know, Antonio, AB, he's out of there. Yeah. You know, and, 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 it's, and, it's, and it's an easy, uh, it's, it's low-hanging fruit because of what happened in the playoff. They have a, a capable receiver outside of Mike, Mike Evans. Evans. They yeah. probably go to the Super Bowl and, and probably easily, right, when you got right. Tom Brady back there throwing the football. And Garrett Wilson coming, I, I, listen, my assumption is I don't see a scenario where Chris Godwin hits free agency. The, the, I know. The Bucks, I know. The Bucks saw this year what it looks like without him, and what happened without him, and how hard it was struggling without him. And thank God they still had Mike Evans. Otherwise, I don't know what the hell that would have looked like. But uh, do you add another guy just in case, or just have another guy? You know what it looked like when you had a B, Chris Godwin, and Mike Evans. That, that thing was it was humming. It was like, damn, like who do we cover as a defense, right? And I think Garrett Wilson, the 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 guy who can kind of kind of do a little bit of a B in terms of after catch. I like the pick, but uh, damn, there's a part of me that would would want to go, and it depends on what they do in free agency, right? Part of me would kind of want to go corner man, a guy you know that goes a little bit later. You know, you're a guy that I think that I would like for the Bucks, but. They go receiver and it's Garrett Wilson. I'm clap it up. Let's get it. Yeah. I, it's, it's, I'm with you. I'm with you because the, the way I see the first round playing out, Garrett Wilson's not available. You know right. what I'm saying? Alave, not available. Right. Drake London, not available. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go get that corner. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know who we're talking about. If, you, if, you, if you've been around this channel, you know, you know who we're talking about. We'll get to him in a minute here. But but yeah, under these circumstances, I, I certainly understand going in this particular direction. I, I, I definitely do. All things considered, especially the way the season ended. You understand what I'm saying? All right. Almost done here with Damian Parsons' inaugural mock draft with the Draft Network. We're reacting to his mock draft. And we have Chris Olave landing with the Green Bay Packers. Now, of course, long overdue in terms of adding more weapons. Um, I, think, I think people... That the handful of stragglers, including DP, call DP out a little bit right here, um, <laughs> saying that that you know Rodgers have weapons and any other. Well, the reality is is that you got a lot of guys hitting free agency, right? You, you're going to have Devontae Adams on a franchise tag, Lazard, MVS. Those guys are going to be free agents. We're not sure exactly how the Aaron Rodgers situation is going to play out. So, whomever it might be, whoever is at the controls, you're going to have to bolster the the receiving core and and you've needed to do so for quite some time here there's also some question marks in terms of some expiring contracts on the defensive side of the ball because you could potentially go in that direction as well but perhaps again with these receivers falling a little bit too rich for your blood to pass up on Olave I've said it before and I'll say it again I think Olave has a chance to be this year's class Justin Jefferson I I think I think this is something about him you know I'm, I'm I'm a Garrett Wilson guy to be honest with you but there's something about Olave that that suggests he might be the guy that just, for some reason, outplays them all. You know, and it says it here in the article. I hate to, to read it word for word, so I'm not. But but I'm gonna give you a little synopsis on this first line. Whether whether Aaron Rodgers stays or goes, let, let's imagine a scenario where he stays. Sign him to a big time contract. Okay, now that means Adams probably gonna stay. He's good. You can sign him to a long term deal. But the ass is gonna be, hey, I need a receiver. Like period. No questions yeah, asked. I, I, need, I need input. 
Right. I need input. I, I need input. And that was one of the biggest things. That's why, you know, they had the rift is because you you didn't you just kind of making decisions without me. It's like, OK, well, damn. All right. And, you know? and not just not just that you draft not just that, that you made a decision without me, you know, but you drafted my okay. quote unquote replacement. Replacement. Like, what yes. are we talking about? Yes. Like, what? I'm supposed to be the franchise. Like, OK. All right. OK. I, I understand. Y'all y'all not going to draft a receiver and you're going to draft my replacement. I got the message. Cool. Mm -hmm. Right. If, if Aaron Rodgers goes, Adams, you franchise, you're not going to franchise him again. And he's probably not going to want to be there. So right. let's get a receiver for yep. our future quarterback in Jordan Love. Like, I, I just don't see a scenario. This right here, there's no scenario where they don't draft a receiver outside of spending money in free agency. And I don't see that. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they need to spend the money in order to retain the quarterback and the receiver and right. then add, bolster, you know, stuff that roster with more perimeter threats for Rodgers. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, the 29th overall pick, we have the Miami Dolphins on the board, and the pick is Drake London. Now, the Dolphins absolutely need to address their offensive line, but I don't know that the board matches up. Drake London at this juncture. Don't force it. <sighs> Opposite Jalen Waddle, man. That That is, uh, <laughs> that is very intriguing. It, it yeah. is very intriguing. Again, I, I don't expect either three of these receivers that we've just mentioned here being this available this late but but stranger things have happened stranger things have happened i don't and again i, I want to re-emphasize the dolphins were had a poor offensive line they have a poor offensive line but depending on what they do in free agency uh and and considering how this particular draft board has has unfolded I, i'm not really interested in reaching for a guy here you know what i'm saying that, that's how i feel about it at this juncture i i'm perfectly okay with Drake. i think this is i think this is a slam dunk pick actually yeah, and I mean, we know what Tua looks like when he has receivers and weapons. Like, you get the best of Tua, right? And he just hasn't had that. And then, like you said, you add the insult to injury with the, the terrible, the worst offensive line probably in the league. Right. Just, you know, I mean, by far, I don't think it's even close, to be honest with you. Um, but again, like you said, we're not going to force it in terms of, of trying to to um, just grab a guy because we need that position. Um, a need for you also is receiver. And I think this is where a uh, need uh, a board meets the need or need meets the board, however you want to say it. So, yes, yeah. yes. I, I think that needs to be stressed as well. I'm glad you brought that point up is that th th there's obviously a need at receiver as well. Yeah. You know, outside of Jalen Waddle, there, there isn't much. The, the cupboard is pretty bare and, and that's not going to get it done. That's not going to get it done with, with the AFC filling up with a lot of really talented quarterbacks and, and those teams are outfitting those rosters with a, a bunch of talent as well. Y you're going to have to score points, like I mentioned before. Yep. Uh, with the 30th overall pick, you know, we alluded to him several times throughout this mock draft reaction of Damian Parsons inaugural mock draft with the draft network. And that's my guy, man. Roger McCreary, man. <laughs> Roger McCreary, another senior bowl participant. McCreary, I think, you know, you mentioned McDuffie is the best zone corner in this class. We've talked about Booth perhaps being the, the 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 most athletically gifted corner in this class. You know, Stingley being the, the perhaps the most polished corner in this class. You know, all of these superlatives associated <laughs> with these corners, man. Roger right. McCreary is your best press jam bump and run corner in the class. And and it's almost counterintuitive to think so considering that you know, there's, there's the, all the fuss about the length of his arms, but his technique is terrific. And and I am a huge believer, proponent of disrupting the receiver at the line of scrimmage. You have to do it. You know, I, I, I understand the value of having a quality nickel. He can play inside, but but I think his, his technique is so good. He'll be just fine outside the numbers as well. I... I, I I, he is a first round corner as far as I'm concerned, and, and I'm glad to see him in the first round. I do expect him to be in the latter parts of the first round, but he's going to go in and he he can he can make this Chiefs defense better immediately. Yeah, and this is this is a team that will leave the corners out on the island, even in the most ridiculous situations. Yes, um, and Spags. so. Yes, yes, man. You got you to get that under control. Man. <laughs> You're doing too much, bro. But um, but yeah, I think that is this is a need. Um, and this is at this point in the draft is the best corner on the board. Uh, take him, run, get the hell out of Dodge, and Spags can continue to do the, the, the silliness that he does, and and have a little bit more um, confidence in his corners that you know they're not going to get roasted. Well, at least McCreary in this case. Yes, sir.
Two more picks here, Drew. Mm -hmm. We have our we have our runner up in the Bengals with the thirty first overall pick, selecting Sean Ryan of UCLA. You know, obviously the Bengals need to improve their offensive line. Was this the right guy, Drew? So the Bengals don't have many needs. Um, you know, every mock draft I think that I've done, it's it's more about just kind of drafting best player available, or um, you know, maybe forcing an offensive lineman in there because yeah. they need it so bad. I, I, I watched the tape. I, Listen, um, he, he has one flaw that that I think that um, needs to be fixed. I, I want to watch a little bit more of him, but man, he he's so in tune with wanting to put two hands on you. Sometimes I'm like, man, all you need is a little jab, man. He's mm -hmm. and, and and he'll get beat because he's trying to put the two hands. Because he's trying to lock kinda, in. Yeah, to like, lock you don't, in. we don't have to lock in every play. You know what I mean? But but he has nice movement. Mira, his feet are nice. Uh, he was used in a ton of ways in terms of um, pulling and and getting to the second third level um you know uh didn't always make contact but you know i, I don't expect offensive linemen to run down there and be able to define the safety cleanly every time but but he, he did what was asked of him and i think you know this need is so glaring for this football team that um this is not a bad pick at the end of the first round they could use a corner because eli apple oh burnt toast you seen a little, oh. the little gift for meme or whatever it is yeah yeah and then we got vernon hargraves applesauce applesauce Applesauce. Apple sauce. Yeah. And and Box. then we got v VH3, Vernon oh, your Hargraves. Boy. Your bruh. boy. Bruh. Your boy. Come on. <laughs> That's the definition of a bust. All right. I was talking to my brother today and we're like, I said, bro, th there's a couple of ways to become a bust. Obviously, through injury, which, you know, that happens. happens. That happens. Um, you know, uh, um, just not not being the guy that you thought he would be for whatever reason he's in his head prime example of that i think is confidence. OJ howard confidence confidence right confidence. i think oj howard is a prime example of that and then you have the guys who they don't they have the talent but they don't improve they don't get any better the work because they love what the game does for them but not but but that's it it kind of just yeah. stops they don't there, they don't right? actually love the game they, they don't love right. the game they, they, they just right. enjoy everything that comes with it and with the final selection in damian parsons mock draft we have the detroit lions selecting jahan dotson drew's guy All right so drew you mentioned it big run on receivers at the end of this particular draft and mm -hmm. and your guy he, he slips right in there at 32 uh, we would have loved to see him at the Senior Bowl. I think he goes a little bit earlier, maybe not in terms of DP's mock draft, yeah. but but I think I think he's he's in the conversation as perhaps a top twenty four pick. You know, assuming he goes to the Senior Bowl and, and and does what he is fully capable of doing, um, the Lions need to add talent. They need they need to add talent. Uh, I guess Damian decided that the, the the quarterback wasn't necessarily the way to go with this second first round pick here let's add some more weapons see what we got um continue to stuff this roster with talent couldn't pass up a Jahan Dotson what do you think Jahan Dotson listen uh this is a very excitable guy that that I just I love to watch him play man and he's not the biggest guy and I I like receivers that aren't the biggest but they play bigger than what they are and this guy does and then you topple that with he's got the speed and the ability to create separation and to go up and get the football and listen the lions need guys that can do a lot of things and this is not a a, a one year two year maybe not even a three-year rebuild this is this is going to take some time because this is one of those teams that's just they're just not in a position to just kind of turn it around and go you know and i think dan campbell and, and the crew there understands that this is going to be a a, a long term um it's gonna be a slow process and a long-term process in terms of getting this team right and so i think not drafting a quarterback not forcing it here there's no reason to do it you're 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 so far away let's just let's just pump the brakes let's just build it within and and if we see if we if, if we can get a quarterback we will but let's not force that you know so yeah and and, and that has been that has been my mantra throughout um I'm well, 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 well before well well before the the, the and i and I, i'm glad you see the light my yeah. friend um, no, no, in all seriousness, that, that has been my mantra well before the end of the season, well well before the, the turn of the new year. You know what I'm saying? This team this team is, is, looks to be taking on the personality of its coach, right? They certainly were playing for him. They, they, they certainly were, were giving it their all. You know what I mean? And 
as much as there's evidence that supports that quarterbacks change the fortunes of franchises, right? But this particular franchise is is unique. Just take a look at Matthew Stafford. First year. Now let's not let's not let's not kid ourselves. That Rams <laughs> that Rams team was loaded. Was loaded. Yeah, and, they had no and, choice. You know what I'm saying? And and yeah. they had been a perennial playoff team. They had been to a Super Bowl. But but Stafford is a unique talent. Unique talent. And there were there were a couple of seasons in, De- in Detroit where they had a run to the playoffs, but no playoff wins to show for it. You understand what I'm saying? So quarterback dropping them in Detroit, considering what you got going on as far as the roster is concerned, a very young group, um, a group that's still learning how to win. You know what I'm saying? You're still a ways off in terms of your defense. You could use a receiver, add some more weaponry to that offense. Let's let's build this thing. I think they've done a great job in terms of, of developing a, a young offensive line. I think that's a great place to start. Now you you move outside, you move towards the perimeter, and you continue to stop this roster with talent and and let that quarterback situation come to you. All right, don't force it. You know, there's a really really talented batch that's going to be available next year. So you know, depending on how things play out this year. Uh, you, you you could be in much better position to drop a young quarterback in a year from now, right? With a roster that's outfitted with a, with more talent so that quarterback can actually enjoy some success. All right? Guys, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Damien. He also worked for uh, Crocker Report. All right? So he's been at it for quite some time, guys. I really suggest that you, you get familiar with his work. Follow him on Twitter. Tell them that we sent you from Couch Potato GM. Um, Drew, anything to add on this particular mock draft or Damien in particular? Nah, man. I, I met him in uh, in Mobile, um, and we had a nice little conversation. Uh, he is a good dude. He is who he is on Twitter. You know, sometimes you, you guys, sure. you, you think you know a guy because you know him on Twitter. He's not quite. No, he is that guy, period. There's, there's no question about it. Um, good man. Uh, and, um, you know, congratulations to him, uh, you know, getting the, getting the gig with, uh, with the draft network. And I think, uh, big things are coming for him for sure. All right, guys, for Drew, this is Juice signing off.